Well, time now for a look inside one of the world's first space taxis. Boeing is a step closer to making it possible for all of us to experience previously what only astronauts could do. The race to get to tourists to space has never been more fierce. Linda Kincaid has our exclusive report from Boeing's International Space Station headquarters in Houston. Going to the moon would be wonderful. It'd be like a six month camping trip on the surface of a distant world. Who wouldn't want to do that? It doesn't get any better than this in human space flight. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 45 years after man landed on the moon, mankind is taking a bigger leap, preparing to taxi tourists into space. I do think that we can see flying to space on someone's bucket list. Known for their planes, today Boeing unveiled their first space taxi, the CST-100. Unlike the old military-style spacecraft, the inside of this taxi is more like a commercial plane. The blue lighting inspired by the 787 Dreamliner. So the lucky tourist that gets to fly here, will there be like a little cocktail somewhere here? I would like to say that there'll be in-flight service and there'll be, um, there'll be cup holders, but uh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really going to be, um, it, it won't be a first-class ride in the sense of it's... Uh, it's sort of rugged, you know, it, it's, it's not, uh, it, it, like I said, it's not first class service. It's uh, sometimes uncomfortable, but uh, once you get in space, you know, being able to see 16 sunrises and sunsets in a day makes it all worth it. Boeing is competing against two other companies for a NASA contract to fly U.S. astronauts to the International Space Station in 2017. It'll be the first launch from U.S. soil in six years. If Boeing wins the contract, Space Adventures wants to sell a seat on board to a tourist. And this is what they would wear. It looks like a traditional spacesuit, but it's much slimmer, more compatible with a smaller spacecraft, and it comes with a built-in tablet. Tony Castellier is a systems engineer supporting business development. We're going to find really innovative ways, from texting to emails to really bringing the things that we use on Earth to space. Late 1990s, we, we started flying Russian tourists, and the Russians were charging their paying passengers about $20 million per seat. So that's a starting point. New York to Australia would take you about 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah, about halfway around the Earth. Each orbit's about 90 minutes. Astronaut Chris Ferguson was the last NASA commander to fly a shuttle from America into space in 2011. He's now director of crew and mission operations at Boeing, overseeing the development of the taxi. What lessons learned from the shuttle have gone into the design of the taxi? Well, the one thing we have an appreciation for is space in space. You know, the, in, the inside volume. A lot of people ask, well, it's a capsule. It's much smaller, right? But in reality, if you look, the kind of the cubic feet available for a person is almost as much as it is in the shuttle. What's interesting, though, is we've taken an awful lot of the switches and dials and rotaries, and we've gone to a much more uh, computer interface. And you've used 3D printing to create a lot of the inside structure. It's amazing how quickly we can prototype things and make the inside of the vehicle look like the real vehicle in just a matter of 48 hours. Whoever wins the contract, you can be sure a trip to space in the next 20 years will no longer be the domain of astronauts and the mega rich. We're building things better. We're building things stronger and faster than any, any time in our history before. And so we're very excited to bring this to market as fast as possible so that tourists, just like you and me in due time, can fly into space in our lifetime. We would anticipate our first launch uh, for the paying NASA customer in, uh, in 2017, and then paying commercial passengers could come shortly thereafter.